Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd, I'd like to uh, welcome a, a member from Massachusetts, Mr. Tierney, here today, who has, uh, along with many other members, uh, a very direct interest uh, in this. Uh, in this. Uh, I have a bicoastal uh, concern and knowledge of, of this industry. I actually, uh, my dad ran a camp for inner city kids on Cape Cod in the summertime uh, growing up. He was a teacher, and uh, uh, one of our neighbors uh, uh, was a fisherman, uh, and I've been to the George's Banks on a small boat and kind of <laughs> understand what, it, uh, what that kind of life is all about. Uh, I also i have been uh, in Oregon now for a very long time, and I represent half the Oregon coast. Uh, and we have uh, very uh, robust uh, fisheries there, and uh, you know it's uh, you know an ongoing work in progress to balance uh, you know the uh, conservation needs uh, with the uh, with the economic needs, and I think the uh, Pacific Council has been doing a pretty good job, but uh, they can do better in a number of areas. I heard a lot of knots uh, from the chairman, and I, I guess that. Um, well, let, let me back up for a minute. When, when we held the hearings in the fall, uh, I thought that this would be an issue on which we could uh, work on a bipartisan basis with the current concerns that were raised. Uh, none of the witnesses said, let's do away uh, with the Magnuson Act uh, and uh, its requirements. And I just heard the chairman give a long litany of what we're not doing. But unfortunately, I, I read the legislation uh, a little differently. Uh, with uh, a number of uh, exceptions uh, that are provided. Uh, and in the end, even after you go through the whole list of exceptions uh, on which you can delay a rebuilding of a stock, uh, you, the, the councils, at least in my interpretation under this bill, are given total license to ignore uh, any and all uh, you know, uh, quantitative science that's provided to them uh, about stocks and just uh, decide that a uh, you know, a stock is not overfished. It's kind of like the uh, biblical passage, uh, you know, making fish that fill, you know, uh, previously empty nets uh, was a miracle in those days, and we're going to try and do it legislatively. Um, you know, as uh, uh, Gary Studs uh, said uh, many years ago, you know, without a fish, there is no fishing industry. So, uh, you know, there is a balance here that has to constantly be struck. Uh, between uh, devastating the communities dependent upon these fisheries uh, and people uh, whose uh, livelihood is at stake and, um, and the future of, of those stocks for those, uh, for those uh, fishermen uh, and women. So uh, I have a lot of concerns uh, about many of the uh, provisions uh, of this draft. Uh, I, I just, and there's a number of things it doesn't look at which are real problems too. Uh, cooperative research and management. I think that's a big problem. We need more of that. Uh, pirate fishing, uh, no new provisions there. Uh, refinancing, at least from a uh, you know, parochial perspective, the West Coast ground fishery uh, buyout, uh, which has been set up in a very inequitable and unaffordable way. Uh, we don't deal with that. Uh, conflicts uh, with ocean energy development, uh, putting uh, prime fishing areas at risk or off limits. Nothing uh, in the bill about that, and I think that's a big 21st century problem uh, for our fishermen in dealing with BOEM. Uh, and, then, uh, and then there's a particularly uh, uh, troubling issue uh, that relates to uh, giving the councils the authority uh, to, do, to okay, without any environmental review, uh, large-scale offshore uh, you know, uh, uh, fish farms uh, full of GMO fish. Uh, which I think are an unbelievable threat uh, to the future of particularly uh, salmon. I mean, we have these new enhanced salmon, and they say, they've said to me, oh, don't worry. Um, you know, most of them are sterile, and they won't get out anyway. Well, let's think about a, you know, a floating net pen fishery full of GMO salmon off the West Coast uh, and what potential havoc uh, that could wreak with the recovery of salmon on which my people are paying 400 million bucks or more a year to operate our hydro system differently to help recover salmon in addition to a whole host of other measures. We're putting those things at risk with some of these thoughtless provisions in this bill to basically just give the councils total license to do whatever they want. That's the bottom line with this bill. If all those knots that the chairman talked about are sincere, then we need to make a lot of revisions to this bill to, to deliver on the promise that it's not doing those things. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank 